Good morning. I've been asked to announce that uh, altar flowers will be available in individual vases for people to either take home or to take to a loved one for Memorial Day. The, fact, the Flower Guild will make individual arrangements and have them available to pick up outside the flower room by the parish hall. It takes them a few minutes to get the flowers down and arranged, so they'll be available probably about 15 minutes after the service is over. I'd call your attention to the announcements in the bulletin. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? Our service will begin by singing hymn number 214. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you've exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. With Paul and Silas, we came to Philippi in Macedonia, a Roman colony. And as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the most high God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, but Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men are disturbing our city. They are, they are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, do not harm yourself for we are all here. The jailer called for lights and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the book of Revelation. At the end of the visions, I, John, heard these words. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let everyone who hears say, come, and let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus prayed for his disciples and then he said, 
I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, take our minds and think with them. Take my lips and speak with them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Tony Tennille grew up here in Montgomery graduated from Sydney Lanier High School. She attended Auburn for a couple of years. We'll have to forgive her for that. And then her family moved to California where eventually she met her husband, Daryl Dragon, a man who had played keyboard for the Beach Boys, a man that Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys called the captain and he had taken to the habit of wearing that sailor cap. Tony and Daryl, the captain and Tennille, had their first big hit called Love Will Keep Us Together. Well, it didn't. They were divorced in 2014. However, Tony Tennille was by Daryl's side in 2019 as he was dying. Their marriage may have ended, but love didn't. The world seems more divided than ever these days. Even back in the early history of the church in the story that we have in the book of Acts, we have Paul and Silas thrown into prison. But the church and the world is more divided than it has ever been. When the leak of the memo from the Supreme Court went out, people quickly chose sides of pro-life and pro-choice. People were divided, good Christian people, on both sides of that issue. And this past week, it made our hearts heavy and we had another gun shooting where 19 little children and their two teachers were gunned down in their classroom. Once again, good Christian people were on both sides of that gun issue. Some people want to get rid of all guns and some people 
uh, want to have everybody running around with a gun. It seems that love can't hold us together. Love can't keep the, our denominations together or our parishes together, it seems. We've had painful schisms in the Episcopal Church. I'm reminded of what Mark Twain once said. He said, man is the only animal that loves his neighbor as himself and slits his throat if his religion ain't straight. Jesus, in today's gospel lesson, knowing that Judas would betray him, knowing that James and John already were arguing about which one of them was going to take over when Jesus was gone, prayed the longest prayer in the entire Bible by Jesus, the high priestly prayer. Jesus prayed that they all may be one. Love isn't keeping Nancy Pelosi and her Archbishop in San Francisco together. Nancy Pelosi and Archbishop Salvatore uh, Condoleone, sounded like the Godfather's name, uh, Condoleone, Salvatore Condoleone. He has excommunicated Nancy Pelosi from the Lord's table because she tried to pass legislation to protect the protections that are given under Roe v. Wade. It's strange to me that for 25 years she espoused a pro-choice position and didn't get excommunicated. But as soon as politics got involved in it, Nancy got excommunicated. We in the Episcopal Church have disciplinary rubrics. They're found on page 409. If you're ever bored by a sermon, maybe this morning, uh, you, you might want to try those out. Uh, so far, I have not uh, felt the need to excommunicate anyone. My belief is that altar table that I stand behind there isn't my altar table. It's not St. John's altar table. It's the Lord's table. Clarence Jordan was a Baptist minister back in the height of the civil rights movement. He's a Greek scholar. He translated the Greek into Southernese in a book called The Cotton Patch Gospels. I believe Jesus was born in Gainesville, Georgia, in that story. But he was a pastor like Will Campbell and Carlisle Marney and John Claypool and other Baptist ministers in that day. And he started an interracial community called Quantity of Farms in Americus, Georgia. That farming cooperative became the model for Habitat for Humanity. But Clarence Jordan told a story about himself. He said he was traveling through rural South Carolina in the year 1960. He was traveling through a small town and he came to a Baptist church. There were some cars parked out on the side saying that somebody was there. And there's a little cemetery on the side and Clarence decided that he would go in and worship God with his brothers and sisters in Christ. He went into that church and he could not believe his eyes. The church was integrated. Black people and white people worshiping in a tiny rural church in rural South Carolina in the year 1960. Clarence said to himself, when this service is over, I'm gonna find out how this church got to be this way. So after the service, he went up to the pastor and he said, pastor, how'd you get this church to be this way? The pastor said, what way? Clarence said, well, you know, black people and white people right here in this 
Southern town, 1960. How'd you do that? The pastor said, oh, that. He said, I was a lay person here. And the deacons came to me and asked me to be the pastor. So I said I would. And the first Sunday I got up into the pulpit. And I, by the way, I do not recommend this. He said, I closed my eyes and put my finger down on the Bible. And it landed at Galatians 3.28, which says there is no longer Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus our Lord. And he told Clarence that he began to preach that message and tell the people of that church that there wasn't any reason in the world why they needed to have a white Baptist church and a black Baptist church in their little town, that they could pool their resources together and be a greater witness for God and God's love if they all came together. And Clarence said, well, what happened then? And the pastor said, well, the deacons came to me and said, I, they didn't want me to preach that message here any longer. And Clarence said, well, what'd you do? And Clarence said, and the preacher said, I fired them deacons. You know, if you can't get the deacons to do God's work, then you just get rid of them. We may all be one in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We have more denominations than Baskin Robbins has ice cream flavors. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. As long as we love and respect one another. Our common ground is found in the life and death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Everything else is just something to argue about. Jesus concluded in today's gospel lesson with the high priestly prayer, Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your no name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in me and be in them, and I in them. To make Jesus' prayer a reality, love is going to have to keep us together. Good Christian people disagree about all manner of things. But maybe the best place for us to start loving one another would be to take this sentence from the prayer that is attributed to Francis of Assisi. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. May it be so. May it be so. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Glenda and Brian, our bishops, and Diana, our priest. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for Joseph, our president, Kay, our governor, and Stephen, our mayor. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. We pray for all those affected by the war in the Ukraine, for our discernment committee charged with finding our next rector, for our companion parish of Espiritu Santo in Tela, Honduras, for those serving in the armed forces, for all first responders and all healthcare personnel. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may come. We pray for Karen Jarrell, George Benner, Christopher Marshall, Fred Tyson, Sarah Stone, Richard McCrory, Mark Heron, Joe Watley, Carrie Shaw, Marilyn Pickett, Eddie McDowell, Tommy Tyson, Leslie Little, Ronnie Shaw, Richard Smith III, Valerie Simmons, Ken Mahan, Joe Carter, Mark Chapel, Shirley Price, Delia, Delia Serpa, Larry Warlow, Sarah Spratling, and Johnny Tyson. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. We pray for all those who have died, especially for those whose memory the altar flowers have been given. Elise L. Hilpern, Florence Walter Loebman, Andy Takeda. Give, give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. We will also come to Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For the victims and their families in Uvalde, Texas. Lord, hear the prayers of your people. And what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death 
and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we depart this place this morning, let us remember the words of Bishop Stow's benediction. Forget not the poor. Pray for the sick. Make no peace with oppression. And love one another as Christ first loved us. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always.
now let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>